Hey there, welcome back. It's Thursday, so I've got some more chocolate stories for you. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Cuna di Piedra, um, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing in the worst accent, but that's what I'm going to be talking about. So these guys are pretty new chocolate makers. They were founded in 2019, and I think they made their like big launch at the Northwest Chocolate Festival in 2019. They are 100% Mexican craft chocolate, and they take a lot of pride in that. So this was founded by three, co-founded by three people in 2019, like I said, um, in Monterrey, Mexico by uh, Enrique Perez, Vicky Gonzalez, and Rosie Landerall. And basically, they wanted to have a product that really showcased everything Mexican and showcased Mexico. And really, it's just a homage to Mexican cacao and products that can come out of Mexico and just that they're proud and passionate about the resources that their land has. So as you probably know, if you've ever ever heard anybody talk about history of cacao. Uh, Mexico has a long history with cacao and bef um, predates obviously the existence of the country Mexico itself. So it goes back 4, 000, over 4,000 years of uninterrupted use in the area. And um, you can tell because there are hundreds and hundreds of drinks local Mexican drinks that have cacao in them and there are recipes the savory recipes like mole that um, are based on cacao so it's just it's just richly intertwined with the history and the culture of the area so let's talk about the three founders so there's there's three people Enrique Perez um, is usually the f the one that you see out there most. He's usually the one giving the interviews. He was or is a food processing engineer and for 10 years he worked in large-scale production plants in Mexico and the US and then he decided in 2013 to go out on his own and become a consultant in the same area. So one of his first clients that he got was it's a um, like a, a well-known Mexican gift shop that makes their own chocolate. And through, the, through them, he got connected with another company, Choco Solutions, that does um, chocolate things, like they provide supplies and sell it in bulk. And so um, he was consulting in all these areas of chocolate and cacao. And then one of the other co-founders is Vicky Gonzalez. Vicky is a... Um, an artist. She has a degree in graphic design and she has she actually has her own creative studio separate from Cuna de Piedra and um, she specializes in branding, in creative branding. And Enrique and Vicky were friends and they wanted to make a product that would put Mexico on the map and so She's their art director and what she calls the brand guardian. And she also designed these beautiful minimalistic packages for the chocolate as well. And then the third co-founder is Rosie Landerall and she studied marketing and she had experience with food trucks. She had helped out with her, she helped run her own family business. And so she, um, with her marketing basis and that history, she runs all the administrative side of the company. She manages their equipment and she manages the staff and does all the administrative stuff. So, let's see, what else do I wanna tell you about Kuna PG? Oh, oh, okay, so this is something that I only recently found out and I didn't know that they did and I'm really not all that familiar with it and I couldn't find a lot of it about it when I was doing my research. So all of their cacao is prepared in a different way than what you would think. So it's called lavado cacao. And 
most craft makers get their beans when they've been harvested, they've been fermented, so all the pulp comes off of the bean, and the fermentation process is usually from three to seven days, depending on different variables. But um, cacao lavado is unique to, um, I want to say Mexico, Central America, but I can't say that 100% for sure. But it is a unique way where there's not really any fermentation involved. Um, so what happens is they wash. So the only thing I could find online was a um, somewhat mechanized industrial process of washing the cacao. And um, Cuna, P Cuna de Piedra says that they do not use machines. It's not industrial lavado. So the nearest I can figure this out is that they, sometimes I read that they let the cacao sit with the pulp in a sack for a day just to get rid of some of the pulp. And then they wash it in water to get rid of the rest of the pulp. And then they dry it. And you end up with beans that are much, much lighter in color. Like if you were to give me a handful, maybe I'll put a picture up here of it. If you were to give me a handful of lavado beans and a handful of fermented beans, you'd totally be able to tell the difference. Um, that when it's done with machines, the cacao is put into a large vat with a spinner stir that mixes them and then it goes into a machine that washes them with water and then down this pipe which spins and removes the water and shoots the cacao beans at the end so that they have no more pulp left on them and they have they're basically pretty much kind of raw because they have no they've undergone very little to no fermentation in the process so they have kind of this raw flavor about them and they're a little bit more fruity so that's something that i need to explore more because i was really not familiar with it and this, this is the first time that i've ever heard a craft chocolate maker talk about lovato cacao okay what else Ah, so all their ingredients are sourced. They're all Mexican, 100% Mexican. They're not kidding about that. So the one I'm going to open today is the hibiscus bar. They get the hibiscus from, and they are in, they were, they partner with, a, I guess it's a cooperative uh, near, I guess Acapulco would be the town closest to what everybody knows. Uh, their sea salt is gathered from a, a place where they've been mining salt for over 2,000 years. They have a mezcal bar that I don't have today, but is a very popular bar. And um, Enrique will tell a story about uh, his four-day hunting trip for to find the perfect mezcal. And uh, it's kind of an interesting story if you ever come across it. And then, of course, their coffee and their chilies are all local partners, local grown as well. Some other things that you should know. So on here it says, if you can see from, um, I'm not going to say that C word because I can't pronounce it, but I can say the next one, Tabasco. So this is, Tabasco is a place, a growing region. It is not a hot sauce. Well, it is, but not in this case. <laughs> it's not a hot sauce from Louisiana. So in this case, it refers to a growing region, not a sauce. So this is not a spicy um, hot sauce bar. Uh, the other one that they have is Soconusco. That's also a growing region. And this one is interesting because Soconusco has a history of being, even today, an historical, of being a sought after area where cacao was grown. So the Aztecs knew this was a place where you could get the good stuff. This was, uh, we had to conquer this area so that we could get the good cacao sort of thing. So it's been, Soconosco has been involved with cacao for a really long time as well. And um, right now they're, they're a little bit worried about it at Cuna de Piedra because there is some urban encroachment on rainforests and cacao grain areas. So, okay, 
that's what I'm going to tell you right now. Let's flip the camera around. I'm super excited to try this hibiscus bar. I've had some of their other bars before. I have not had the hibiscus bar before. I, in general, love hibiscus and chocolate. Uh, so I'm super excited to try it. So let's flip the camera around and go to it. All right, so I want to tell you a little bit about this packaging and about their name. Um, this beautiful minimalistic packaging. So the name Cuna de Piedra, Cuna means um, cradle, but in very literal sense. So in a more um, nuanced sense, it means a remarkable place where something was nurtured. And Piedra means stone. So that is also what this part of the bar refers to, design refers to right here. So there is a stone that is used um, in central Mexico and Central America. It's called a batate in Mexico. It's or a, a mealing stone. It's a horizontal grinding stone. And I'll put a picture of it up here, maybe up here. Uh, it's a horizontal grinding stone where they would go back. You, you have this um, what's called a mano and you would go back and forth on this usually volcanic stone curves or sometimes not to grind grains and seeds so you could grind cacao you could um, often grind corn and lots of other things would be uh, ground on the stone and this one goes back a long time too it goes back like they have evidence of something similar to a matate back to 3000 BCE so long long history with the grinding stone there uh, let's see what else do I want to tell you. Okay, so and is the whole package itself was basically the stone was the inspiration because traditional Mexican dishes really would not exist without the stone. So the stone really is the inspiration for the packaging and almost for the chocolate itself because the grinders we use today are basically based on this stone right here. So I love, look at this. So I love how when it's at 73%, the package is lighter than when it's at 85%. Just a subtle difference, but important. They're paying attention to that kind of thing. So this one's pink because it's got hibiscus in it. So this is cacao from Tabasco, the growing region of Tabasco. It's a 73% Lovato cacao, washed cacao. Here's your matate. Oh, something else that these guys do really cool. They're quite specific about their cacao harvest. So take a look at this. Rainy season, harvest 2019. Okay, that's really specific, right? And it honestly, it makes a difference if you are picking it during rainy season or dry season because it changes, it can change the flavor of the cacao. It can change the pulp, the amount of pulp there is and all kinds of things. So let's see what else we've got on here. Um, yes, okay, so it just talks a little bit about where they get their hibiscus flowers. And I think I read something about also there being, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, they're being pressured to um, convert to, to get certified organic, which is difficult for small farm holders because it's an expensive process. So here's our ingredients. Cacao beans, cane sugar, dried hibiscus, and that's it. All right, so let's open this bar from Monterey, California. Oh, here's the other cool part. I hope this comes across on camera. You can see, so they purposefully do this when they package the bars, they package the bars and they push this down so it comes through. And this means um let's see uh mexican cacao um from the cradle of mexican cacao from bean to bar so i hope you can see that and you'll see that when i open the bar too nice i can see the little dusting of hibiscus there hibiscus is not a big flavor in the u.s it's too bad good I like it 
so let's just take a look at that. Wow, it's so good looking bar, so nice. So it's a 73%, but it's got a little bit of a lighter hue, lighter rosy hue because of the hibiscus in there. Look at, it's so nice. No marks or release marks or imperfections. The back, you've got the nice inclusion there. Really nice. Okay, <laughs> it's melting in my hands already. It's hot. Ooh. That was a pretty good snap. Not, I would say, a super strong snap, but wow, I think this must have a lot of cocoa butter in it or it's also really hot in my room because it's melting in my fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and melt it some more by rubbing the cocoa, the, my thumb on the chocolate and releasing the volatiles in the cocoa butter and smelling it and see what aroma I can get and then I'm going to give it a taste. So let's give it a try. All right, so this is actually, this cacao is actually from a single estate. So beyond just single origin, it's a single estate cacao. cacao. Um, and the hibiscus is not just on the back, it runs throughout all of the cacao, so it's all mixed in there. And it has a really nice hibiscus flavor. Hibiscus kind of tastes like a citrusy cranberry kind of flavor, really nice throughout the cacao it's hard for me to tease apart whether the citrus or the fruit is coming from the cacao or the hibiscus because it's so well integrated but the cacao is really deep nice cacao for a 73 percent not bitter ever so slightly drying in the mouth so just a little bit astringent but it's also very um, coating in your mouth it gives you a good chocolate flavor all throughout your mouth so it's a it's a nice hibiscus bar I like it and um, if I haven't met a hibiscus and chocolate bar that I don't like so this one will go on the list of one of the hibiscus and chocolate bars that I do like so let's flip the camera around and finish up all right, so when you're eating this bar, you really are eating history. You're getting a piece of Mexican culture. The hibiscus was brought there by the Spaniards. It's been cultivated ever since. Cacao has been there continuously for 4,000 years. So you are really tasting Mexico's contribution to cacao history. And it's amazing how fast this company has grown. So they've gone from um, 2019, they've, that's like just a little over, maybe almost two years now. And they're being sold on three continents now in nine countries. And they're really, really doing a great job on shining the light on Mexican, Mexican cacao and its link to history. And really a great product being produced, a fine flavor cacao being produced in Mexico right now. So they're doing a great job. Good job, Kunin de Piedra. So that's all I have to say about them. Um, I hope that if you tried them, you'll leave me a comment below and uh, like this video if you liked hearing the stories. And if you want to hear a story next week or weeks to come, go over here and click subscribe and you will get a story every week. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.